Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this Wednesday, the 18th of November 2020. Today, the Church in Wales is celebrating the feast day of St Hilda. Uh, confusingly enough, the Church of England celebrates it tomorrow and uh, the day in which he died was yesterday, so make sense of that. But today, in Wales, it's St Hilda's Day. Hild, uh, or Hilda, was born in 614 of the Royal House of Northumbria, baptised in York at the age of 12 by the Roman missionary Paulinus. She was later an influential lay leader in the church. She was encouraged by Aidan of Lindisfarne to become a religious and subsequently established a monastery at Whitby. This house became a centre of learning and as a meeting place of the important synod of Whitby in the year 664, at which Hilda's role was that of a reconciler between Roman and Celtic traditions. Hild is remembered as a great educator, exemplified by her nurturing of Cadman's gifts for vernacular song, and she died on the 17th of November in the year 680. And so we come to our evening prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servants bless you and they make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. Now as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions, cleanse us by your refining fire and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts Make us ready to enter your kingdom where sounds of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Here my chosen for this evening is um, him by um, Alcuin of York, who was um, a few generations after Hilda. Eternal light shine in my heart, Eternal hope, lift up mine eyes. Eternal power, be my support. Eternal wisdom, make me wise. Eternal life, raise me from death. Eternal brightness, make me see. Eternal Spirit, give me breath. Eternal Saviour, come to me. Until by your most costly grace, invited by your holy word, at last I come before your face to know you, my eternal God. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may, may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. To the psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 73. Truly God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious of the proud, I saw the wicked in such prosperity. For they suffer no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore pride is their necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within, the conceits of their heart overflow. They scoff and speak only of evil, they talk of oppression from on high. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue ranges around the earth. And so the people turn to them, and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. Ever at ease they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleanse my heart, and wash my hands in innocency? 
All day long have I been stricken and chastened every morning. If I said I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. But then I thought to understand this, but it was too hard for me until I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the end of the wicked. How you set them in slippery places and cast them down to destruction. How suddenly do they come to an end and perish and come to a fearful end. As with a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you arise, you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered and I was pierced to the quick, I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion for ever. Truly those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God have I made my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And the first reading from the prophecy of, Is of, prophecy of Isaiah, sorry, prophecy of Isaiah chapter 10. On that day, the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no more lean on the one who struck them, but will lean on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. A remnant will return, a remnant of Jacob to the mighty God. For though your people Israel were like the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction is decreed overflowing with righteousness, for the Lord God of hosts will make a full end as decreed in all the earth. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, O my people who live in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrians when they beat you with a rod and lift up their staff against you as the Egyptians did. For in a very little while my indignation will come to an end and my anger will be directed at their destruction. The Lord of hosts will wield a whip against them, as when he struck Midian at the rock of Oreb. His staff will be over the sea, and he will lift it, as he did in Egypt. On that day his burden will be removed from your shoulder, and his yoke will be destroyed from your neck. He has gone up from Rimah, he has passed to Ayath, he has passed through Migron, at Michmash he stores his baggage. They have crossed over the pass at Giba, they lodge for the night. Rama trembles, Gibeah of Saul has fled. Cry aloud, o, o daughter Galim. Listen, O Laisha. Answer her, O Anathoth. Madmena is in flight. The inhabitants of Gebim flee for safety. This very day he will halt at Nov. He will shake his fist at the mount of daughter Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Here ends the first reading. And the song of God's assembled, the canticle for this evening. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We have come before God's holy mountain to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before countless angels making festival before the assembly of the firstborn citizens of heaven. We have come before judge God, who is judge of all, before the spirits of the just made perfect. We have come before Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So let us give thanks to God and offer to him acceptable worship, full of reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. And our second reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him, and there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, saying, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. 
Then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to another, do this, and my slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly, I tell you, in, <clears throat> in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that very hour. Here ends the second reading. And our responsory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. And the Magnificat. In the heavenly kingdom, the blessed have their dwelling place and their rest for ever and ever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown the strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In the heavenly kingdom, the blessed will have their dwelling place and their rest forever and ever. So we come to our prayers of intercession for this evening, praying as always for the church throughout the world, praying especially today for the Diocese of Salisbury in, in the Church of England and for its Bishop Nicholas and for the Diocese of Dunedin in New Zealand, and for Stephen, its bishop. We pray too for the Dufferin Cluid Mission Area, for Hugh Bryant, their mission area leader, praying today for St. Megan's Church, uh, for the dedicated and hardworking congregation, for the guidance of the Holy Spirit as they seek to discern the role of the, that the church plays in the life of that rural community and in the mission area as a whole. And so we pray for all churches everywhere, particularly for institutions dedicated to St. Hilda or St. Hild, for St. Hilda's College in Oxford and the College of Hill, St. Hilda and St. Bede in Durham. We pray too for churches dedicated to Hilda and we pray for all those who follow in her footsteps as women religious, as religious sisters or nuns. And we also pray for those who live out the life of faith in their own lives and in their own ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the needs of the world around us. We pray, especially in this kingdom season, for all those who are in authority at this time, that they may acknowledge the just and gentle rule of the King of glory. We pray for the leaders of the nations, praying for those who lead our own country, praying for Mark Drakeford, the First Minister of Wales, for Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and we pray in the international community, particularly for Joe Biden, the President-elect of America, 
and also for Donald Trump, who is still the president. We pray that the spirit of the Prince of Peace will inspire the hearts of all those in authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whom we know who are in need of our prayers at this time. We pray for those who are lonely at this time, who increased loneliness and isolation. We pray for our ministry and the way in which we are able to help them and to touch their lives. We pray by name, as always, for Colin and all those in nursing and residential homes and for Daniel and all prisoners. We pray for their families as they worry about them, unable to see them maybe, or seeing them in circumstances which are less than ideal. We pray too for Luke and Emma, as always for Sue, Richard, Tim, Louise, Derek, Joanne, Mo, and we pray for those who are bereaved, especially Philip and Richard and Andrew, Lucinda and Joe. And we remember the souls of the faithful departed too, for Mikey, who was laid to rest today, and for baby Leo and for Judith. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a few moments of quiet, we bring to you, Heavenly Father, our needs, our concerns, and our petitions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for St. Hild. Eternal God, who made the Abbess Hill to shine like a jewel in our land, and through ho holiness and leadership, bless your church with new life and unity. Help us like her to yearn for the gospel of Christ and to reconcile those who are divided through him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. And uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, we pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me this evening here in St. Giles, and uh, wish you a very good evening. Thank you.